tap into the inner being and forge solutions for themselves. And so in studios, I'm joined by Dr. Derek Samuels. He is a motivational speaker. He is an author. He's so many things in one. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for making time. And I'm happy that you're here because then you'll help us get to that point on how we can start changing our mindset to the different challenges that we face. Let's get to that. Many say that uh, maybe it could be too late. Um, I'm an adult. I'm at this point whereby I, I, I totally believe that I, if I'm in a crisis, I have to blame it on someone. It's too late for me. So let's begin with that point. Who do we blame? Is it the education system? Is it our upbringing? Is it the culture? Where exactly do we place this? At the end of the day, responsibility lies on you. It's an individual responsibility to succeed. You know, I tell people, I'm the voice against stagnation because I believe in success. And because I believe it, I behave it. And because I behave it, I'm becoming it. What I've discovered in life is that a lot of people, yes, they believe something, but they, they need to understand that it's their responsibility to behave it. Behave it means that you begin to put it into practice. You begin to apply those things that you believe about yourself. So who do we blame if we fail? You. <laughs> not the system. Because within you, you have the potential. Within you, you have the power. Within you, you have the strength to move forward. Somebody emailed me. She was in one of my conferences. She's 65. So she heard me say, at 65, your life just is just starting. She said she got that message and she just started something at the age of 65. So if you're 65 listening to me, you're 70 listening to me, please do know your life is just starting. Forgive your past, fo focus on the future, and make use of the moment. It's important. It's important. So as parents, because we know that you play a major role in just shaping the mindset of our young ones, how best can we go about parenting just to ensure that these children grow up knowing that you know what I'm gonna to get to that point where I'm independent it won't rely on my parent to connect me to get a better job it won't rely on my parent to you know have finances that are stable it all relies to me so in terms of parenting what are some of these principles that parents need to take care of I appreciate the question it's a very important question that's why I wrote the book on take charge life-changing principles for African youth because I believe people become what they keep hearing especially here in Africa I'm trying to get the youth to understand that entitlement mentality is not a good mentality to have you think you know your parents are the only one that will going to help you out or the government you know what I mean you got to take personal responsibility you know what I mean but parents also have to they have responsibilities in terms of you know okay this is very important I want to emphasize that you so see for example here in Uganda I was told that there are some youths you know who are the age of 25 30 living with their parents and their parents will buy them all manner of things I'm not against your parents buying you things but at the age of 30 your parents have to buy you cell phone of a thousand dollars your parents have to buy you sneakers and you're not working what are you teaching people what are you teaching people when we are keep buying for you you're not working take responsibility and for you that are listening to me this is very important because I suffered so much in life I was very we were very poor that even poor people say that we were poor but what saved me what delivered me was my hunger for reading mm -hmm. hunger for success hunger for knowledge I spent hours and hours studying and when I came out of the university then in Nigeria when I was in Nigeria then I was born in Nigeria anyway there was no job. You see, you come out of university, there's an advertisement for a job of five, you know, sports in the, an IE company, and you have about 500,000 people applying for that job. What are you going to do? You, don't, you may not have the influence at some high level. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? So I went back to what I need to do take responsibility. I went to people's houses teaching them arithmetic, teaching them biology, teaching them chemistry because I was not designed to beg. You can't be a beggar. We are lions. Lions are not beggars. Beggars are not lions. So the responsibility is on the youth. Responsibility is also on the, on the parents. But for the youth, it's your choice to move out of the comfort zone because through discomfort you come out of discomforts. 
I came out of discomfort through discomfort. Let me ask you a question. And many would say that, but this is how I've been brought up. Mm -hmm. So as parents, where do we draw the line between loving our children and not spoiling them too much such that they don't develop this attitude of entitlement? You see, sometimes parents, they forget that they suffered to get to where they are, where they are today. So, if suffering made you, I'm not saying suffering in a negative way, yes. understand that. You know that what I'm using the word hard work made you. Well, how do you think that laziness will make your children? As a parent, you know that it was discipline that made you. How do you think that in discipline will make your children great? You see what, what we're talking about? So, it's the, 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 the responsibility of parents to understand that the ladder that took you up, you shouldn't remove it. That's the same ladder that you, your children need to get to that level that they want to go. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So how, where do we draw the line? And sh remember how you went through difficult situations to get to where you are. And it will never change because you have kids. So if you keep spoiling your kids with gift, so let, let me tell you something. People don't appreciate what they never earned. Mm. That's why Abraham Lincoln said, teach my son that a dollar earned it's worth more than five dollars found. It's easier, you see what I mean? So when you keep spoiling people will give, trying to, no. Let them take that responsibility, then work so hard for it. You see, when you work hard for something, you don't abuse it. That's the reason when you, when you, when you have salary, salary of let's say uh, 20,000 uh, uh, Uganda shillings, you work so hard, you sweat. You know what I mean? You don't want to spend it anyhow. But when people just give you 20,000 Uganda shillings, oh, you did nothing and you just got it. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You just want to, you know, you just want to spend, you want to just drink, you just want to do whatever you want to do with it. So people become responsible when you give them that opportunity to discipline themselves and work for it. And work for it. So how do you make children work for their gifts? Very good. Stop giving them what is not due them. That's it. Why should I give you one thousand dollar cell phone when you have not worked for it. What should I give it to you? What do you need it for? So do they do chores or something? Yes. What exactly should they work? They for? have that responsibility. Give them responsibility. You see, when you, you see, I have kids. They earn, they earn something. You see, when you promise them, let me give an example now. Let's say you have kids. You say, okay, if your result improve in your class, I will buy you this. That is, they earn it. Or you do this morning chores. They earn it. So there must be something they earn. You see, kids, they love to earn something. But you have to give them that mentality that if you, if you work hard, you get this. And it's very important. If they truly work that hard and accomplish that goal, make sure that you give it to them. Because it's very important. You must not disappoint them. You must not disappoint yes. them. Yes. You better not promise. You better not promise and not keep your promise. How does that affect them? Do they notice? Yes, they do. You see, if you tell your, your child, now let's say you have two years old child or three years old, that when I'm coming back, I'm going to buy you, let's say, I'm giving an example, let's say biscuit, okay, or candy. You see, that child, from that moment, let's say you left around 8 a.m., you are coming back around 4 or 5 p.m., that child is anticipating that my mom is coming back and she's going to get me candy. She's going to get me cookie. So if you come back without that candy or cookie that you mentioned, oh, he or she will be disappointed. That's why never make promises you are not willing to keep. Wow. <laughs> I think I'm guilty of that one now. Check my words. You'd rather not promise if you know you won't deliver. Correct. You have written a book on business and it yeah. says uh, Christian... Christian Yourship. Uh, Christian Yourship, mm -hmm. your spiritual MBA for business success. Correct. Let's get to business success. Uh, Uganda is a very entrepreneurial Correct. state. Yes. And we're told that if we are to be compared by any other state in Africa, in terms of entrepreneurship and the vigor to just start off businesses. It's here in Correct. Uganda and we are proud of that. Yes. But many businesses don't thrive. Mm -hmm. So who do we blame it to? Because you'll start a business, you get to a point whereby mm, you realize mm. getting the books going and the finances mm. to manage and yeah. to sustain the business, it's hard. Correct. So once you get to that point where you're stuck and you're at the verge of actually collapsing, your business is at the verge of collapsing, where do you turn to? Hmm. That's a very important question. Generally, small businesses fail after three, four, five years, generally, okay? Not just because it's Uganda. It's but a very all. big challenge. But not all fail. Not all, but generally. The reason is because there are a lot of factors that make businesses fail. 
First, sometimes a lot of people just go into business not knowing that the demand or what it takes to do business is actually more than they've ever put together maybe when they were working for somebody. Number two, it could be that you were very careless when you were working for somebody. Let's say you go to work late. It becomes a habit. You know, work starts 8 o'clock. You always come 8.30 because it's somebody else's work. By the time you start your business, it's the same attitude. So everything boils down to that attitude. Business is about learning. Some people just get into a business without understanding the business environment and domain and terrain. Boom. Oh, maybe they have uh, money to start small business. They just start. You don't understand the business. You have never done any any research. You don't even know how the operation, uh, the operational uh, 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 part of that goes. So it's a very big problem. Another issue for small businesses is lack of finance. Mm -hmm. But again, even the discipline and the accountability, because sometimes even when you have that loan, some people don't even know what to do with that loan. You see what I mean? They begin to spend it anyhow, not in terms of misappropriation, but sometimes they don't even know, in terms of prioritizing, what is first, first, and second. So these are the challenges that small businesses face. But if you've ever hit the wall, it's never give up. If you ever hit the wall, never give up. But this is very important when it comes to business. Somebody said, and I like that, he said, you become great by two things the books you read and the people you meet. Networking is key to maintaining business. You got to build your network. You got to meet people. What is networking and how effective can we network? Is it I, just a matter of meeting a group of people, getting the business cards and you go home? How can we effectively network? I like that. You know why I say I like that? Because I, I, I have gained a lot meeting people. Life is essentially those you meet or you fail to meet. If you meet the right people, you will know. And, but the problem we have is that when we meet people, we don't know how to follow up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just meet people. And again, this is very important. When we go for networking, this is where people make mistakes. They pursue the powerful. But I pursue the available. The available always lead me to the powerful. This is what I mean. Let's say you're in a networking and environment now. Because this guy is a very high level person, position in that company, you are gravitated towards him in that networking time or her, you know. But the person that is sitting next to you may be the person that you meet. But you feel that, oh, who is he? He's just one guy that works in some places. Do you know that so many places I've been in, in life, so many I've been to United Nations to speak, I was in so many places. People that connected me to those places, they never look like it. Mm. You have to be very careful. When it comes to networking, understand that the powerful may not give you a chance, but the available will always give you opportunity to meet the powerful. So be respectful. Recognize people. Be respectful because you never know who will take you to where you are going. It's very important. So never judge a book by its cover. Not at all. So once you start that conversation, because I'm also in business, I do consultancy, and many people ask me, once I get into this networking group or mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. and I meet you, for example, I say my name is so-and-so, where do I start? Mm -hmm. Do you immediately start by introducing what you do? Which many a times puts the other person off. So what's the trick to get the conversation going okay. and still achieving your goal? Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Now you're getting to, to the nitty-gritty. You know, you see, when you meet people, People want to know how good they are, how nice they are. Like, I can start, usually, this is how I start. I could start with something maybe about you. I can say, oh, you look nice. I like your smile. Because you want to start a conversation, all right? And also be, be sure that you understand that sometimes it may not always go well. So don't blame yourself if it doesn't go well at the end of the day. But you have to start something by initiating, oh, I like your smile, or how are you? Oh, my name is Daryl Samuels. You know, not, you know, you just start conversation that way. Then you begin to find out what interests this person. But it's also good to talk about yourself, but don't be overly on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's good to talk about yourself because at the point you're going to ask, what do you do? He or she may ask you, what do you do? But you know, some the reason one of the reasons why a lot of people don't um, ca get it when it comes to networking is that they themselves don't know who they are. For example, I used to make that mistake before. When you go for networking, they say, "Tell me about yourself." Oh, you have already written a pitch about your thirty-second pitch. Da, 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 da. I am this. I am that. I am looking for this. They didn't know who are you. So, like my people ask me, "Who are you?" At the point, I began to ask myself, "Who are you really?" And I got that answer. I'm the voice against stagnation. So when people ask me, oh, they say, mm, interesting, tell me about it. You see, now I begin to, uh, 
you know, I begin to explain what the voice against stagnation is all about. Mm. Same thing. But don't be shy when it comes to networking. Because sometimes what you're afraid of is actually afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there's been this conversation still sticking to networking before we come to a close. Um, people say that business cards don't work anymore because you get to a networking group and you will get so many business cards at the end of the meeting. Business cards that you will never refer to again. Maybe the only one that you'll get to is the, maybe the conversation that cut out for you. So do business, work, uh, business cards work? Yes. Okay. You see, the problem is not business card. People don't follow up. The issue is follow up. Yes. I meet you and that's it. If you need something, you go for it. You knock at doors. You disturb a little bit. That means you're serious. Okay, for example, you see this book right now, The Power of the New You. I was in flights uh, in one of my uh, um, speaking engagements. So there was this young man sitting very close to me. So I was reading this book. We started a conversation. So I told him, he said, this picture looked like you. I said, yeah, that's me. He said, oh. So within uh, 30 minutes, he finished reading Wait, this book. you are reading your own book. Yes, I read, of course. <laughs> oh, I read my uh -huh, own book. Uh -huh. So, you know, the more you read, the more you know. Okay? The more you read your own book. Yes. Okay. I read my book a lot. Uh -huh. So now I said, oh, he told me, oh. So I gave it to him. Within 20 to 30 minutes, he finished reading it. I got a contract from him to come train his people. We call it leadership lunch and learn for 30 minutes. He flew me to his state. He paid me. Open your mouth. Period. <laughs> and when you open your mouth, they give you a card. Follow up. It's important. Don't just have card and pile of cards. And again, you see what I tell you? The reason people don't make it well when it comes to networking is that they pursue the powerful. Pursue the available. Pursue the available. The available will only lead you to the powerful. Give me three pointers of following up. What you should you miss out on when following up? Okay, first of all, when you meet people, you determine whether there is any common interest. Okay, it depends on what you're looking for. If it's a business, something related, quickly follow up. And also, when you're emailing or you know, whether a phone calls or whatever you want to do, email, I always prefer email first. You know what I mean? Always put the subject line. Let's say I met you in, in flight. I could say, I could say, um, nice meeting you in flight today. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he or she knows, oh, I flew today, right? So you already know that you were in flight today. So you just say, it was nice meeting you, a pleasure meeting you. Don't talk too much, just three, four, five lines. But again, if there's any point of emphasis as it relates to what you do, you think that he, you couldn't finish when you guys were discussing, that's where you need to also put it there. Oh, like I said in our discussion, I'm a motivational speaker, I'm a leadership expert, I do this for these people, I do this for these people. In case you may have opportunity in your company where you think, I'm available. I'm available. Availability. Yeah, availability. You see that now? <laughs> yes. So I look forward to hearing from you. Okay. Thank you so much. That's it. You All follow right. up immediately. All right. Mr. Derek um, Samuels, as you come to a close, your last view or message to the viewers as we come to a close one second yeah you know life is full of challenges but within you is potential and that potential you have to develop that potential now when you develop that potential it's not enough to develop it deploy it deploy means that you need to move life is about movement don't sit at home crying the victory is not sitting down crying victory is standing up trying i encourage you keep trying Thank you so much. Keep trying. That has been the message today here on Solution Segment. Keep trying. Get out of your comfort zone and just do it. Do it, do it, do it. It's all in you acting and pursuing your dreams. That has been it for Solution Segment. My name is Malaki Villaudera. Do have yourselves a blessed day. See you tomorrow. Watching Morning at NTV.